The Grignard reaction is used to prepare the Grignard reagent, which can then be used to make new carbon-carbon bonds. In this video, we will be discussing how you can prepare the Grignard reagent and the various techniques involved. First, collect the necessary apparatus as shown here. You will need a posture pipette, two graduated cylinders, a mortar and pestle, a 50 ml round bottom flask, a condenser, drying tube, and a weighing boat. The reagents that you will need to obtain will be dry ether, magnesium turnings, and the halogen compound you will be working with. Once all the glassware is collected, ensure that all glassware is properly cleaned before starting the experiment, as the Grignard reaction is highly sensitive to impurities. It is recommended that you use a test tube brush when you're cleaning the glassware. Next, rinse all glassware with acetone after washing. Ensure that there is absolutely no water remaining in or on the glassware as the Grignard reaction is very sensitive to moisture. It will not proceed if it comes into contact with any amount of water no matter how small. Once you have rinsed the glassware with acetone, invert them onto paper towels and set them aside to dry for roughly 10 minutes to remove any residual acetone, which can cause unfavorable side reactions. Refer to your lab manual for a description of the side reactions that can occur if the preparation of the Grignard reaction is contaminated with water. While the glassware is drying, set up a hot plate on the bench outside the fume hood since the ether must be kept away from heat sources. Heat a 200 ml beaker of water on the hot plate until it is warm. Do not heat until boiling. Use a weighing boat to obtain the required mass of magnesium turnings. Transfer the weighed out magnesium shavings into the mortar for grinding. Thoroughly grind the magnesium turnings with the mortar and pestle. This is an important step as it exposes more surface area of the magnesium for the reaction to take place. This is what your ground up magnesium turnings should resemble. Attach the 50 ml round bottom flask to the retard stand and place the magnesium turnings inside. Here is a condenser. The bottom pipe is connected to the tap and the upper pipe is connected to a ring clamp which is placed on the sink. Ensure that there is a steady flow of water. Here is a bottle of dry ether. This will be utilized as our solvent. To ensure that the ether is dry, look at the sodium ribbon and ensure that it shines. To prepare a feeding solution, add the required amount of dry ether and halogen compound separately using different pipettes within a graduated cylinder. Here is a stock solution along with the feeding solution. Prepare the stock solution using the required amount of dry ether and halogen compound solutions. Ensure that you cork the graduated cylinder so that the solution does not evaporate. Once you have both solutions prepared, transfer the stock solution into the round bottom flask and quickly attach the condenser to it. At this point, you should start the water flow. Here is the experimental setup that will be used for the preparation of the Grignard reaction. The round bottom flask will be the site of reaction. The condenser will ensure that all the volatiles can be reused in the mixture and the drying tube has been employed such that no moisture is incorporated in the reaction. While working on any experiment, please ensure that the fume hood is placed at the maximum height of 18 inches. As per lab safety requirements, a height over 18 inches is restricted and is not considered a safe practice. The Grignard reaction is a self-sustaining reaction once it is initiated by a source of heat. Bear in mind that the heat source must be subtle. The source should be warm enough to initiate the reaction, but also ensure that it does not produce any side reactions. Initiate the reaction by using the heat of your palm. If you cannot start the reaction using your palm, you can employ a warm water bath to initiate the reaction. This is a warmer source of heat and provides a uniform distribution as well. The reaction mixture now appears to bubble, indicating the transfer of heat. The beaker is removed when the reaction is proceeding vigorously. See whether the reaction is self-sustaining or whether the solution turns from colorless to gray. 
Once you remove the warm water bath and observe that the reaction is self-sustaining, dry the bottom of the flask using a paper napkin. The solution should appear colorless at this point. Here is a bottle of iodine crystals. If you are unable to initiate the reaction using the previous techniques mentioned, these crystals can be used to initiate the reaction. The iodine replaces the halide from our halide compound and this facilitates the reaction to initiate. Obtain the crystals using a scupula so that the tip of the scupula is covered. Transfer the iodine crystals to the reaction mixture. Immediately add the condenser to the round bottom flask and try to initiate the reaction using your hand or a warm water bath. See how the solution has turned brown. If the reaction could not be initiated by using the techniques mentioned, see your TA or course coordinator for further help. Use the warm water bath to initiate the reaction. After 15 to 20 seconds, remove the water bath and see whether the reaction is self-sustaining or not. If it is, begin to add the feeding solution to the reaction mixture. Once you remove the flask and observe that the reaction is self-sustaining, dry the bottom of the flask using a paper napkin. Use a clean and new posture pipette to obtain the feeding solution. The feeding solution will be added dropwise, so you should fill the pipette only slightly above the tip. To add the feeding solution into the reaction mixture, use either your left or right hand to remove the drying tube as shown. Now using your other hand, Add the solution dropwise. The solution should be added slowly so that the reaction proceeds in the desired manner. Once the feeding solution has been added, immediately reattach the drying tube to the condenser using both hands. Use one hand to hold the condenser and the other to fix the drying tube. Using both hands allows stability in inserting the drying tube. Keep on adding the solution dropwise until the feeding solution is over. Wait for the reaction to proceed for 10 to 15 minutes after that. At the end of the reaction, the solution is expected to appear milky white or gray. Disassemble the apparatus and cork the round bottom flask and let it cool at room temperature for about 5 minutes.